Hi, I'm Jim W6LG. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Today we're going to tune up an amplifier, which is kind of fun to do. And if you've never owned an amp, um, follow along. The steps are pretty easy. The amp that I'm going to tune up is uh, one of the Drake L4Bs that's behind me. In fact, it's going to be that one. Um, I'm going to load it into a dummy load, and so I'm not putting a signal out on the air. And I'm going to go through the steps that I use to tune an amplifier. If you own an amp or if you're going to buy an amp, you want to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Whatever they say, that's what you need to do. In my case, I've used 3500Zs for many, many years since the 1970s, so I'm really familiar with the tubes, although I do have instruction manuals and uh, I do follow them in terms of uh, grid current in particular and play current and the ratio between those two. However, now having said all that, the amplifier on the, that one is pretty much stock, so it has a stock power supply. That one I put in a Peter Dahl transformer, it has about 800 more, more volts on the plates. So the tuning process for me is going to be a little bit different than the stock amplifier. Uh, the other thing that I do is the switches that are on, I think I can do that, there. The switches that are part of the Drake L4B are really hard to find and they were a bit fragile. So what I've done is on out of camera range on the wall over there, I mounted a box with two uh, standard light switches. There's an SJ cable going into it with 240 volts. The switches switch both sides. Uh, yeah, they're tied together. And then it's like an extension cord over to the, uh, to the power supply for the L4B, which is mounted on a uh, counter behind the, uh, the ready room table or the desk. Why do all that? Well, what I do is I don't turn it on with the on switch on the front because they take a hit. Now, I, I did put in a soft art um, module which has a relay in it, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and switch it on on the wall. The soft start puts a resistor in the line and then takes it out a split second later. The reason why that's a concern is um, in the power supply there's a bunch of capacitors and there's a transformer some diodes, there's no choke in the power supply and it happens to be a voltage doubler and right after that, so it's transformer diodes and right after that in the chain of things are the capacitors and I forget how many mics I've got in there, something like 30 microfarads. So when that's on, that amplifier can draw like 100 amps or 200 amps, just bam, those capacitors are like a dead short for the power supply for a cycle. Um, and it's a lot of inrush current. You can see it on scopes and things. So to avoid that um, damaging the switch, I've done a couple things. I've got the switches on the wall and I've added a, a soft start which is another resistor that s slows the flow of current. So as the, as the current increases the value of that resistor drops the voltage even further so it isn't such a hit. I'm not worried about the transformer. The transformer can take it fine. It can do that all day long and the diodes are I put in like three or five amp diodes are pennies a piece so why not? And the capacitors are brand new. All the amps that I've had over the years I've replaced the capacitors. Those things tend to dry out. Uh, also really important the equalizing resistors that are across each of those capacitors must be replaced they act like a bleeder resistor across the power supply to uh, up across the uh, capacitors to bleed off the voltage when it's turned off and they also equalize the voltage across each of those capacitors so if one resistor has a slightly different value and they do from another one capacitor may have instead of 450 volts across it might have 800 volts and another one has 150 whatever so I always change those out and the values that they used in some of the power supplies uh, especially the Heath, the SP220 were sort of low so those resistors ran really hot they were heating up the capacitor so I used a fairly high value I forget um, 75,000 ohms something like that anyway I'm gonna move the camera from over there to over here and I'll show you the tune-up process I am going to uh, resort to the instruction manual for in just a second. Before I do all that, I have two amps side by side, and the one on the 
far side quit working and I thought well I mean it, it on receive it was full of noise and things went crazy and so I swapped the cables over to the other one I have backups for lots of stuff so I put it over on that one and sure enough in a day or two it went nuts and I had well when I fixed up those amplifiers I changed the uh, I replaced rather the changeover relay the reason for doing that is it's just easier uh, and if there's any question about that relay I just put in a new one it's a fairly simple thing to do they're 10 15 bucks you got to dig into the amplifier but those things go out. What will happen is you go to receive and the contacts will close but they're pitted and or dirty and you can try to clean them but it doesn't always work. So your receive is muted. Um, that's the usual thing that you see. So uh, getting back to the story I could figure out what the heck was going on. Well I finally sorted it out. It was this and this is a cable I did not make. This happens to be a tram cable. Um, so I can see what I'm doing. The um, PL259s that are on here are soldered. Uh, they don't appear to be loose. This cable's never been outside. As a matter of fact, I was selling these on my website at one point. Um, and that one appears solid. Something's going on on the, on the inside of this. And my guess is that, and this is why I believe in crimping PL259s, uh, that on this side, as I look at it, it looks like it got really hot when it was soldered, and it may have uh, breached the uh, the dielectric, which is foam and melts pretty easily. Anyway, don't overlook this. If you have our feedback, weird things going on, don't overlook a coax cable that's gone bad. It maybe was good forever, and it's now bad. Anyway, this is going to go in the trash. I'll try not to use it again. Okay. I'm going to move the camera. I'm already at nine minutes and uh, on this recorder, and it will shut off automatically at 15, which has caused me nothing but grief. Thank you, Sony, for or it's at 30 minutes. Anyway, I'm going to move the camera, set up the tripod. Uh, I've got a watt meter. Uh, yeah, that one. And uh, we're going to. The process is this. I'm going to apply a little bit of drive. Now, again, you have to look at the manual and see how much drive they recommend some amplifier and I'm talking about triodes some amplifiers that have tetrodes have lots of gain and five watts into it will drive the drive it up to really high power so it may be that you have to start with even less in the case of this um, this was designed to work with a lot of different amp a lot of different uh, transmitters and so um, it, it can easily take a hundred watts of drive and the uh, the, the uh, k3 I'm going to use to drive it um, barely puts out 100 watts even though it's rated at 110 watts. Uh, it says here on, on um, driving requirements 100 watts PEP on SSP, 75 watts on CW, AM, and RTTY. Those are the days when you could um, run a maximum of 2,000 watts input and 1,200 watts out. This amp was rated at plate input power of 2,000 watts PEP input power. Uh, output would have been about 1,200 watts of 60 percent efficiency. And it's designed to match a 50 ohm load with an SWR of 2 to 1 or less. IMD products minus 30 dB, 33 dB. Um, real quick, why have an amplifier? Well, I'm basically a DXer. Um, uh, an amplifier can be a relatively inexpensive way to gain some dB. So if you buy a relatively small amplifier that's 400 watts, it's a huge difference. It's a full S unit. Um, these things will get me pretty close to two S units. So in that video I did with the decibels, remember two times two and you get three dB for each one of those steps. Well if you do the math, uh, an amplifier can make a huge difference. Um, again, I'm not talking about pileups, I'm talking about calling somebody who's in the noise. Um, I believe in searching and finding DX on your own and we'll talk about that later. Alright, enough of that. Going to move the camera. That'll probably be the end of it. I'll narrate over that and I'll go through the steps real slow about how I'm doing it. It's how I tune an amplifier. Your instruction manual may t tell you something different. If you have tetrodes or some really neat tube, uh, it's going to be completely different from what I'm telling you here. So, all right, going to move the camera back in a flash. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to turn on the linear. And yeah, I'm going to zoom in with the camera a little closer. So 
I'm going to do this in steps. Uh, I'm going to start off at 5 watts, and I'm going to double the power each time after each step. So I'm going to dial up uh, 5 watts on the K3. Um, I'm going to position the knobs so they're sort of close. That's roughly in a 20 meter range. I'm going to move the plate loading control up a notch. I know it's not going to be at zero when I tune it, so I'm going to go to one. It's probably going to be a lot higher when I get finished. So right, here we go. I'm going to key it. I'm into a dummy load. Um, well, let's see. If, first of all, let's see if I can play for I do. And grid current. I'll just do a quick check of grid current. Okay. Almost nothing. And I go to uh, forward. 300 watt scale, so that's this top scale, 300 watts, and I'm going to put uh, 5 watts into it and tune for max out. There we go, that's better. Alright, that's um, probably about 80 watts, yeah, 70, 80 watts out. And I've got uh, less than 200 mils. So, let's double the power. I'm at, was it 5 watts of drive? I'm going to go to 10. Dialing that up on the K3, which you can't see at the moment. Alright, and I know that the um, plate loading control is probably going to be higher. So I'm going to move that up a tad and tune for max out. Okay, there's about, two, uh, about 130, 140 watts with uh, 10 watts of drive. Alright, so each time I'm doubling the power and I'm tuning for maximum output, let's check grid current. Grid current's way low, so I'm well within specs. Grid current's um, for the two tubes about 225 mils. I'm only drawing two, less than 50 mils, 60 mils anyway. Alright, so that was uh, 10 watts. Let's go to 20. And Again, oh, put that to forward power. And I've gone past 300 watts. So let's move this up to the uh, 3,000 3, watt scale, which you would never get to, but um, uh, it makes it a little more accurate mid scale. So let's see what we got. Um, probably 400 watts. Darn near 400 watts. Okay, so let's it's two now with 20 watts of drive. Let's go to 40 watts of drive. Each time I'm doubling the drive, and I'm going to increase this a tad. It's about 600 watts out. Still about 100 mils of grid current. Alright, well that was with um, 40 watts of drive. Let's go to 80 watts. And this should be pretty close. I'm going to up that just a little bit. Oh, and I want to put that back to uh, forward power. Okay, there's about um, 900 to 1,000 watts. This watt meter is a little bit low in its calibration. I have an external watt meter. I'm looking at it showing 1,040 watts out. And let's go to... Now, the K3 honestly won't put out uh, 110 watts, but I'm going to dial up 110 watts. And I'm going to up that just a bit again, because I don't want to arc the plates Okay, that's showing a little over um, maybe 1,050 watts out. The um, LP100A is showing 1,200 watts. And actually, that's about right, 1,200 watts um, for this kind of plate voltage, which is um, 2,700, 2,800 loaded down. It's about 2,400. So let's up the plate voltage. 
and the plate voltage is now 3200. I've got to be a lot more careful when I tune it up. Uh, each time I tune, I'm keeping it under maybe, certainly under 10 seconds, trying to do it at about 5 seconds. So I'm going to turn that up just a hair, put that back to forward, and see what happens. Okay, that watt meter on the uh, Drake is showing about 1,200, 1,300 watts out. The um, LP100A, which is external, is showing uh, 1,420 watts out. Okay, what I would do at this point is increase the load control a hair, which is going to load it more heavily. You're going to lose a little bit of output, but chances are the voice peaks are going to exceed this sort of static uh, level carrier that I'm putting into it. So I want to tune it more heavily than just key down. And um, there's a couple of ways to do that. One is just to increase the load control a little bit and retune it for maximum output. So uh, another way to do that, and I can do it on the K3 here in just a second, is to uh, put a two-tone car two -tone carrier into it. And I'm dialing that up now. Uh, and turning that on, and we'll see how much output it shows. All right, it's going to show a little bit less, um, but well within specs. I'm up to 800 mils, or 750 or 60 mils of plate current. Uh, less than 200 mils of grid current. That amplifier is tuned, and again. Um, Pushing a little control a little bit up so that if you have voice peaks that exceed this 100 watts I'm putting into it, uh, and sometimes it can. It, the initial syllable or two can sometimes be uh, many times the uh, the 100 watts that you think it is. It can be instantaneously uh, a lot higher, and that can cause some spider. Anyway, that's how you tune a triode amplifier. It's really simple. Start with uh, 5 watts and just keep loading it heavily, more heavily and heavily. Uh, I'm not tuning it for uh, the dip, and we'll just see where the dip occurs just for the heck of it. And actually the dip is occurring about at maximum output, but I always tune it for max out. I don't care where the dip is. I just want to get it for maximum output. All right, that's tuned up for darn near legal limit at 1400 watts, 1400 and change, and there's no difference between that and 1500 watts. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm done. I've loaded it a little bit more heavily than... Uh, than is required, and as a result, it's showing about uh, 12, 1300 watts out key down. All right, that's tuned. Uh, it's a nice amp. If you do it that way, you won't arc the plates. If you arc the plates enough, after a while, they uh, they'll arc all the time because you move uh, aluminum from one plate to the other. And it creates a, a gap. It narrows the gap between the plates. Then you got to go in with a file and take it out. And a lot of the amps I've bought over the years had some damage like that probably because they were being used by guys who didn't know how to tune it up. Anyway, that's how you tune it. That's the way that I tune. That's the way that I tune a triode amplifier. It's really simple. Just tune for maximum output, increase the load, and play, tune the plate. 73. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, you might want to subscribe. I'm going to do some more videos. I've got a couple uh, in the works right now. 73 from Jim W6LG. Thanks.